This is an example of our Bosch system. This is the hydraulic diagram. Now we keep using these hydraulic diagrams because you see them occasionally and we think it can help you visualize the system better than some of the fractured schematics we see for the electrical system. Let's take a look at the nomenclature here. We've got a number of things changed. We have the inlet valve, which we used to call the isolation or pressure increase valve, the holding valve, again, a variety of names. The outlet valve, we used to call the dump valve, pressure reduction valve, whichever one you want to use. We've got a number of other things we're going to look at here, so let's talk about this in, in its total and make it go through and apply the brake on the right rear to see what all has to be changing over to do that during ABS. The operating steps for dynamic vehicle control will be covered in to help you identify problems that will make diagnostics a lot easier. Now, dynamic controls, again, as we've said, infers that the brake pedal is not depressed. This sequence will walk through on how to build pressure up and how it's isolated to this and applied to specific wheels. The changeover valve is the first thing you're going to see different. It will energize to close to block the pressure from going back to the master cylinder. Some literature refers to this as the master cylinder changeover valve. You'll see both ways. Here's our changeover valve. There's two of them, and there's two pumps. There's one for each brake system. Well, there's three pumps because at the top there's a charge pump. We'll talk about it too. The changeover valve is activated to close. That seals off and changes over from the, the source of pressure from coming from the master cylinder to coming from the pumps. Let's go see how, what else we've got to do with this. We've got to close the inlet valves. The inlet valves are closed to allow the system to be pressurized without locking the brakes. That's our blocking valves we've talked about before. The stability control applies the brake pressure momentarily to specific wheels just like we went through before and we talked about in detail. Here's our examples. The inlet valves on this four of them here on this system. All valves are energized to close. We first step, first sequence in our stability control is to block the system so we can pressurize it without applying the brakes. Now that we have them energized, the pump intake valves are open. Be careful. Pump intake versus brake inlet. Very similar names. They were confusing to me at first. But just think, pump inlet, keep those two names together, and it makes sense. These pump inlet valves are open to supply fluid to the pumps. Remember, the change oil valves are already closed, so pressure does not go back to the master cylinder. Here we are. The pre-charge pump is going to give us a pressure from 140 to 218 PSI, and it's going to supply to the intake valves, which are now open, and they're going to supply fluid to the pumps. The pumps come on, turn the red there, as you see. That's our high pressure. Going to all the inlet valves, as you can see, all four of them have the inlet valves. We have them all pressurized. Remember, this is going to happen when the car sees yaw reaching higher levels than it likes, looking at speed, looking at steering activity, looking at yaw. It's going to decide, I need to power up this system so that it can operate anytime it needs to for uh, stability control. It has to be up and ready. Now, the brake inlet and outlet valves are cycled by the ECU to supply pressure to a specific wheel like we went through before. This is an example where the right wheel that has been selected by the PCM for momentary braking will be used and the inlet valve will be de-energized momentarily to increase brake pressure. Then the outlet will be energized momentarily to reduce the brake pressure and we turn the inlet valve back off and they toggle back and forth to get the exact braking force they need. So that's a fairly simple thing. Let's talk about our vehicle stability. We went through normal braking action back in ABS. Went through stability control. We went through special operating conditions where the driver is not required to depress the brake. And you've been familiar with these. We've been through diagnosis that are fast and conclusive, showing you how to energize the, these valves and test their actual reaction. And don't forget that all these systems require B plus and ground to function. All of them require B plus and ground. That's so simple. 
how many times we've gone behind someone who couldn't get something to work, only to find he's got codes for several solenoids and a blown fuse. More than one code for solenoids inoperative. Look for fuse, look for ground. Remember, the electronic brakes force distribution is just a specialized way to get the maximum braking force out of our ABS system. Traction control is a specialized system, very much like electronic brake force distribution, except we don't reduce uh, engine torque with brake force distribution. Power-assisted braking. We're actually going to close off the system, raise the pressure higher than that developed by the master cylinder. Electronic stability control, we just went through the whole thing. And the newest system is brake by wire where the vehicle can stop itself without driver input. Also, we're going to take it a step further, you'll find that when the driver steps on the brakes, he's not actually applying the friction material. We'll show you that in just a moment. But this has gotten our basic system. We've gone from ABS through all these systems, and we get all the solenoids to work. We're ready to start getting to the advanced stuff.